subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we have uh, a, a special hero, a very um, a beautiful hero with very, very beautiful soul. Ibrahim ibn al-Adham, Ibrahim uh, 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 ibn al-Adham, or Sultan Ibrahim, or Sultan Ibrahim, as some people, as what some people call him. He's among the people that we call the people who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-'arifuna billah, those people who are very well connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah be, be pleased with him, uh, in his book, Madab Jus Salikin, he explained those who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well, and he called, him, called them al-'arifuna billah. Those people who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are those people who are very well connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they understand the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when they understand that, their minds will look in the future, will look in the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not, they, they don't look with, your, with their own eyes, but they look different than us. They look at things different than everyone else. Among those people, among those righteous people, those people who the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ibrahim ibn Adham, uh, Sultan Ibrahim, as we're gonna call him today. He is uh, originally from Belkh. Belkh is the city in Afghanistan, uh, northwest east Afghanistan, uh, very close to uh, Uzbekistan and very close to uh, Iran too. Uh, he's uh, from that city. Uh, his parents actually, his mom was pregnant when his parents decided to do Hajj. And his parents actually traveled from uh, Belkh, from that city, from North Afghanistan all the way to Mecca. And when she got to Mecca, his mom, she gave birth to him. She was pregnant with him when they went to Hajj. And remember, at that time, for them to, from Belkh to Mecca, it would take them months, it would take them four to six months to travel. And his mom was pregnant with him when she traveled, and she gave birth to him in Mecca. And his dad actually was so, you know, happy and so pleased for his son to be, uh, be born in Mecca. He took him to the Kaaba right away. Uh, he grew up in Belkh, and his dad was among the governors of Belkh, or the cities around Belkh. So he was actually spoiled as a child and he grew up to be a very spoiled young man. Uh, he would, you know, whenever he wants, he'll, you know, whenever he wants something, he'll, he'll get it. Whenever he wants something, he'll do it. Uh, until an, a special incident that happened to him. And he tells this about himself. He said, one day I was hunting. He would go in, in the jungle and he'd go in the mountains to just hunt, you know. And at that time they used bow and arrows and he would be just, you know, hunting. He said, until, he said, I was hunting and a sound came to me. And he thought this sound came, came out of his head. I was like, what are you doing? What kind of life you have? What kind of things you're doing? Are you created just to go have fun and hunt and not to do anything? Are you, are you created for, for just fun? Are you, is there any other purpose of your life? He said, at that second, I realized I, I'm created for better purpose or greater purpose or bigger purpose. So at that second, actually, he left everything. He left the world. He left this world life he lived. He left everything, like all the luxury life he had, and he headed to Mecca right away. He headed to Mecca. He wanted to learn Islam. He wanted to learn about more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to become among the arifin, the people who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, when you have this intention that you want to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have the intention that I want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be close to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in Hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you said, if you walk toward me, I will run toward you. What does that, what does that mean? That means if you walk toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you take the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you faster than you're going to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants to go to him. And we are in the month of Ramadan, the month of repentance, the month of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should try our best at this time to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went to Mecca. And he met the scholars of Mecca, and he actually, uh, he left all the luxury life. His, his dad and his brothers went after him. And, and, the, and then, and they sent actually one of their servants with the horse, with some money, with some like, he's like, just go look for him. He's going to Mecca, go look for him. And give him the stuff. He Give him the horse, give him the money. That, you know, we want to make sure that he's having a good life. Make sure he want to make sure that he has something to spend. When the servant get to him and found him after maybe a year or so, and he said, do you, do you recognize me? He's like, yeah, I recognize you. You're among the servants of my father. And, you know, he said, yes, my, your father and your brother sent me to you and tell you, take this wealth, take this, you know, horse, you know, have something. And he said, you know what? I want to tell you something, but don't tell anybody. Don't tell them what I'm going to do. If you're telling the truth, take the horse and take the money and keep them for you. And he had 10,000 dinar at that time. 
10,000 dinar equivalent to $10,000 at that time. He just gave it to the servant. It's like, just gave it and go. And you don't have to go back, you know, because they send the servant also to serve him. He said, you don't have to go back to them. You know, do whatever you want. Take the money, go ahead, make a business, do whatever you want. So he connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he connected, you know, with the scholars that were in Mecca. And not just that, he started traveling Ibrahim al-Adham. He went actually to Iraq and he spent time with Iraq and with Iraq and Iraq and spent time with the scholars of Iraq. And later on, he became very close a friend with a person named Shaqiq al Shaqiq al Al-Balkhi. Shaqiq al-Balkhi is one of the great scholars also of Balkh and of Iraq and of the Muslims. And they became very close friends. And there was a very interesting story about Shaqiq al-Balkhi and Ibrahim ibn Adham. One day, Shaqiq in Iraq was a very close friend with Ibrahim. And one day, Shaqiq excited. He had some business idea. So he told his friend Ibrahim, he's like, listen, tomorrow I'm traveling. I'm going to go on business. I'm going to pursue some business idea that I have in my mind. And I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, Ibrahim's like, good luck, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, inshallah, you know, that will be a wonderful adventure that you go on, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have tawakkul, you know, and go ahead and do, you know, what you want. So, uh, Shaqiq al-Balkhi, he left. Uh, next day, he left uh, Iraq, and he went into the desert, and he, traveled, he, 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 he started traveling. The following day, Ibrahim uh, bin Adham was sitting in the masjid, suddenly he, his friend, Shaqiq, comes back to him, and he saw him, he was like, wait a second. You told me you're traveling yesterday and you should be way far now, you know, a day ahead in your travel while you're back here. He said, I changed my mind. I was like, why did you change your mind? What came to your head to make you change your mind? He said, I was in the desert and I saw this broken bird. This bird in the desert with like both wings were broken and blind, cannot see. He said, I know, but I started paying attention to this bird. How this bird is living in the desert? Who's feeding this bird? He said, suddenly I see, you know, a bird coming off the sky, carrying stuff, you know, on his, uh, its on its peak, he said, and dropped it to this blind, broken bird in the desert. And this broken, you know, broken and uh, blind uh, bird started eating from that. He said, I said, I said to myself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would provide me with this. I can start my business, you know, in, in my city that I'm in. Why would I need to travel? Allah, I, I should rely Allah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. Ibrahim al Adham looked at him and he gets so angry. She said, You want to become the broken bird? You don't want to become the flying bird that brings the food to the broken one? It's like, what kind of mentality is this? What kind of thinking is this? If you want to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, do uh, everything that you can. What, what the scholars, they, they, they say, Abdul Asbab, do the causes of things. Don't just sit in your home and say, I'm going to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring me a part today. I don't have to do anything. That's something called tawakul. That's something that you, uh, false reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the lesson. Ibrahim, Ibrahim ibn Adham taught his uh, uh, friend, Shaqiq al-Balkhi, not to, to have the false reliance of Allah, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, Ibrahim al-Adham was in Basra, and he was among the, the, now the most famous scholars, most famous righteous people of Basra. So the people of Basra and Iraq came to him. And he said, Ya Imam, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua all the time, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer our dua. Why do you think, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Al-Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your Lord said, make dua to him, call him and he'll answer you. Uh, Imam Ibrahim bin Adham, he had different understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, oh people of Basra, you neglected 10 things. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala neglected your dua. And they looked at him, what did we neglect? He said, first of all, you knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you did not, you did not respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way you should. He said, second of all, he read, you read the Quran very well and you read the Quran beautifully, but you did not work and implement the Quran itself. And you guys, number three, claimed that you love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much, but you left his sunnah. We cannot claim that we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we don't follow his sunnah. Because following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the sign that we love him. And when we do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us. He said, and number four, you guys claim that the shaitan is your enemy and you followed shaitan and instead following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and number five, you all of you claim that you get to Jannah already. You all claim that you are in Jannah, but guess what? None of you work for it. He said, number six, that you all of you claim that you are free from hellfire, but you do things to throw yourself there. He said, number seven, he said, you guys, uh, you did not realize what's death, what's death, what's, what is death upon you. You look at death and you don't pay attention. So you didn't prepare for death. 
And he said, number, number eight, he said, you are busy with other people, with other people's mistakes, and you're not busy with your own mistakes. And he said, then number nine, you go visit the graveyard every single day. And every single day, you guys bury people in the graves, but you like, you, as if nothing, you don't have feelings for death. And he said, the last thing, number 10, that you guys ate the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spent of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoyed the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but did not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. And if we, if we are missing some of these things and we are not practicing the right, you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us, we've not given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights, then that's a problem. We need ourselves now to realize that, you know what, we need, to, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer our dua, we need to implement these 10 things. And one day also, something, another man came to Imam Ibrahim al-Adham and he told him, yeah, Imam, you know what? I want to, I, all the time I have the urge to commit sins. Every single day I have this urge, commit sins, do this, do that, you know? He said, I want you to tell me something to stop me from committing sins. He said, no, don't worry. I'm going to tell you five things. If you can do one of them, then go ahead and, and, and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commit as much sins as you want. Five things. If you're able to do one of them, then go ahead. Commit as much as sins that you want. Can you imagine? There is things if we do, we can commit sins. He said, tell me, what's the first thing? He said, if you want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to commit sins, then don't eat from anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you. He said, how can I do that? What, what, everything we eat is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he told him, then why do you know disobey him? He said, second of all, if you want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then don't live in the earth that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Live in some, somewhere else that does not belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, everywhere belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where can I go? Even if I go to the space, the space belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, then why do you disobey him? He said, then, number, he said, you know, uh, number three, he said, if you want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then hide in a place that no one can what? Can see you. No one can see you. He said, are you joking? Wherever I go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. He's like, then why do you, do you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he said, number four, oh, go ahead and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when the angel of death come to take your soul, tell the angel of death, wait and give me some time and, uh, to repent. And then I go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you can take your soul. He's like, no, I can't do that. That's impossible to be done. Then he told him, why do you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he told him the fifth thing. If you are willing to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commit sins, then okay, go ahead, do it. But in the day of judgment, when the angels are taking you to hell, tell them, give me time to go back. Give me time and don't take me, take me to Jannah. Try to push them away from you. He said, no, I can't do that. He said, then he told him, why are you committing sins? Why are you disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then the man made istighfar and he said, Astaghfirullah wa atubu I say forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, and I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, a beautiful reminder that sometimes when we are by ourselves, when we are like, you know, going to commit a sin, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. You remember that we are in the universe that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that we are enjoying the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that the angel of death comes, we cannot delay him. And remember that we, if we are going to be taken to hell, we cannot tell them not to take us. So let's this in our, let this sink in our mind and let's think this be a reminder whenever we're going to commit a sin. Another interesting story. Two more, inshallah, stories to finish, inshallah, of our hero of today. One day, Imam uh, uh, Ibrahim al-Adham, Ibn Abdul Adham, was visiting Mecca to do Hajj. And after Hajj, he went to Medina to visit Prophet Muhammad, the great Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was known to be a man of zuhd, that he, he was this attached of this, this world. He doesn't have a lot of wealth and money. Remember that he gave up, he gave up, he gave up everything just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just to learn Islam. He said, I want to, al-masjid, and he was in the masjid of Nabawi, uh, you know, trying to, you know, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying until Isha came. And then after Isha, the guards of the masjid came and kicked me out and said, we're closing the masjid at night. No one is allowed to sit in the masjid and, and you know, and sleep in the masjid. So they locked the door, he said, and I sat on some of the, you know, steps of the masjid outside the masjid. He said, and across from me was like some shop. He said, within a few hours before Fajr, a man came and opened the shop and it was a bakery. And this man started, you know, mixing the dough, preparing to, you know, to bake. And he saw me. So he called me. He said, come in, come in. Don't stay outside. Outside so cold. Come inside. And Medina in winter, subhanAllah, can get really, really cold. He said, I came and sat inside the, the store. 
So Imam Ibrahim al-Adham, he saw the man, you know, mixing the dough. At that time, they didn't have the mixers, they didn't have the machine that we're lucky to have, you know, to make our amazing bread for, for thaw. He saw he was doing it with his own hand. And whenever he does something, he said, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Astaghfirullah. And he was just remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Ibrahim looked at him and he said, how long have you been, you know, doing what you're doing? He said, what do you mean? He said, making dhikr, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while, while, you know, mixing the dough and, you know, working. He said, I've been in this situation for like 20 years, all my life, you know, since I, you know, I had this bakery. He said, what does, what did the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to you? Remember in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how did that help you? He said, whenever I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me. He said, everything I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me. And he said, did any Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then Imam Ibrahim told him, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent anything from you? Did he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give you? He said, it's been like a couple of years, been a few years that I asked, there's a great Imam I want to meet. His name is Ibrahim al-Adham. And every time he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, I would love to meet him. I would love to meet him. I'd love to meet him. Imam Ibrahim al-Adham looked at him and he had tears in his eyes. He said, the dhikr that you made brought me to you, Al Ibrahim al-Adham. Subhanallah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you in a gathering better than the gathering that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within yourself, you're sitting saying, subhanallah, subhanallah, by yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you by himself. And imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember you. What would happen to you? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember you, all the blessings, the entire, everything will open in, you know, in your face. And all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come your way. Later on, by the way, Imam Ibrahim al-Adham, I didn't mention that he was born in the, in the year 718 uh, CE. Basically, that's 100 years of Hijrah, exactly 100 years after the Hijrah from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he passed away at, uh, in the year 165. So he, when he passed away, he was 65 years old. How did he pass away? He joined the Muslims army to fight the Crusaders or to fight the B uh, Christian Byzantines in, in, in the Sham area later on, who came to attack the Muslims at that time. And actually, specifically, some of the uh, historians, they tell us he, he, he died in one of the islands. Actually, he was, you know, he was injured, and then he died in one of the islands in the Mediterranean Sea, and it could be specifically Cyprus. And then the Muslims, they brought him to Syria, to Sham area right now, and they buried him. And later on, the Muslims built a masjid next to his grave. And what do they call that masjid? Masjid Sultan Ibrahim in Syria right now. It still exists until today. It's a beautiful masjid with, with white domes actually on top. It's very beautiful, very nice masjid, close to the Mediterranean, very close to the, to the water, to the sea. And his, his grave exists until today. And his masjid that they built, you know, the Muslims built later on for him, it still exists until today in Syria. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, one day, inshallah, when the situation is much better, inshallah, to give us the opportunity, all of us, to visit his grave, inshallah, and leave the Fatiha and make dua for him, inshallah. That was our hero of today. Somebody who was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well. What we need to learn today is we have this blessed month to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get to close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and later on after the month to practice everything that we learned in this month in our daily life. Jazakumullah khair, and inshallah, we'll end with dua inshallah today. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana, Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana, wa qiyamana, wa ruku'ana, wa sujoodana, wa saliha amalina. اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولأسواجنا ولأذرياتنا ولأبنائنا ولأهلينا ولأصحابنا ولطلبتنا ولمعلمينا ولمن أوصانا واستوصانا بدعاء الخير ولمن له حق علينا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اصلح لنا شاننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجدام وسيء الأسقام اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خير and we'll see you in the next week السلام عليكم